So, now we will talk about modular arithmetic <coughs> or the equivalent notion of congruences. So, this goes back to remainder that we obtained on division. Okay. So, division on remainder recall was the following. If you had a number d, a natural number d and you had any integer n, then we could divide n by d to produce a quotient and a remainder and the remainder had the following property or the following requirement that it is a number between 0 and d minus 1. Okay. So, the remainder can be 0, 1, 2, 3 all the way till d minus 1. So, these are the possible values of the remainder. Okay, so, there are d different remainders possible. So, observe that the remainders, remainders, the number of possible remainders uh, are d. So, possible remainders are d in number. Okay. So, now uh, here is a, a notion we say that two numbers are congruent modulo d. So, we say that we say that two integers n and m are congruent modulo d if they leave the same remainder on division by by d okay so if they have the same remainder on division by d okay and there's a notation for this which is again very useful so the notation if m and n are congruent modulo d, we would write this as m as this, uh, this uh, three lines here and we read this as m is congruent to n mod d. So, that is how we denote this relation of being congruent. So, let us just do examples if you take d equals 2. So, what does division with remainder when you divide by 2 mean? You can either get a remainder of 0 or a remainder of 1. So, what are the various numbers? If I have a number n, let me tabulate the remainders that I get on division by 2. So, if I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on, so I could also write them out for the negatives. So, observe that if I have an even number 0, 2, 4, 6 and so on, when they when I divide those numbers by 2, of course, they leave a remainder of 0. Okay. So, these guys would give me a remainder of 0 on division by 2 because they are all even numbers, whereas the odd numbers when I divide by 2 would give me a remainder of 1. Okay. So, there are only two possible remainders and if I sort of co collect together all numbers which give me a remainder of 0 that gives me the evens and the, the ones with the remainder 1 give me the odd. So, observe that if uh, so n is even would mean the following if and only if n is congruent to 0 mod 2 right. So, remember what does this mean that if I divide n by 2 the remainder I get is the same as what I get when I divide 0 by 2. Okay, so, when I divide the number 0 by 2, of course, it re leaves remainder 0. Similarly, the odd numbers have the property that they give you a remainder of 1 when I divide by 2 and another way of expressing it is as follows, n is odd is the same thing as saying that n is congruent to 1 mod 2. Okay, so, the, the remainders are odd here, uh, remainders are 1. And there are also other things, you can al also express uh, relationships amongst numbers. For instance, 3 and 7 are congruent to each other modulo 2. Okay. That is just saying that the remainders are the same when you divide both of them by 2. Okay. In this case, the remainder is a 1. Similarly, 10 is congruent to 100 if you wish modulo 2. 
because both give you remainder 0. Okay, so, and so on you can sort of see how this concept works by working out many examples and look at the possible remainders and now we will write out all the values of n. So, the remainders are in this case when I divide a number by 3 I can either get 0, 1 or 2 as remainders and let us now let us do the table a little, little differently. Let me now write down all values of n which would give me a remainder 0 on division by 3. Of course, that just means that n is a multiple of 3. So, what numbers would give me 0 when I divide by 3? It is just 0, 3, 6, 9 and so on. That is the list. Now, similarly, if I want a remainder of 1 on division by 3, then well, here are those numbers. If I take 1, 4, 7, 10 and so on. Similarly, I could do things on the negative side as well. So, here for instance, the preceding number is minus 2 and so on. Okay. All these numbers observe when you divide them by 3 give you remainder 1. Okay. Similarly, here I have 2, 5, 8, uh, 11 and so on. Okay. And observe there is a very easy way of, of getting these guys. So, you, once you know one of them which is a 1 here, you just get the rest by adding multiples of 3. Okay. So, I, I add 3, I get 4, I add 3 again, I add 3, subtract 3 and so on. So, all these numbers just differ from each other by multiples of 3. Okay. So, observe uh, sort of an easy observation here. If m and n are congruent to each other mod d, okay, in other words, they both give you the same remainder here is what, here is an alternate way of, of saying this, this is the same thing as saying that d divides their difference. Okay. So, we are already seeing it by example in this case, if I take any two numbers which give me the same remainder. So, I take uh, any two numbers for instance in the second row here, they, are, they both give me remainder 1, their difference is always a multiple of 3. Okay, so, the difference very much is going to be divisible by, by d and it is very easy to see why this is true. So, let me just briefly sketch the proof and leave it for you to complete formally. m, let us say m gives you some remainder, m is, let us write it out as q d plus r. Okay, r is a remainder when m is div divided by d. Similarly, if n is divided by d, I get let us say some other quotient q prime but the remainder is the same right that's what being congruent mean means so here's what i have and now observe if i subtract m minus n the remainders will just cancel each other right so the r cancels the r and what's left is just a multiple of d okay so that's the sketch of the proof why when two numbers are congruent to each other their difference is divisible by d okay and there are lots of other interesting properties of congruences especially uh, so, let me just single out a few of them uh, specifically related to addition and multiplication. So, if m is congruent to m prime mod d and let us say n is congruent to n prime mod d, then here is what I can say the sum of these two numbers m and n is congruent to the sum of the other two numbers m prime and n prime. Okay, so, the congruences respect addition is one way of stating this. Similarly, you know I can also put minus there if I wish or multiplication if I multiply m and n it is again going to be congruent to m prime n prime. So, these are very easy to prove and I leave them as ex exercises for you, but they have very, uh, you know, they are really useful. They, they have very interesting consequences. They also make computations with congruences very, very simple. Okay. So, for that reason, this addition and multiplication properties are extremely important. So, this whole business of congruences has this rather, uh, so here is a pictorial point of view. 
or how one should think in terms of pictures when one thinks of congruences modulo d and so on. So, observe that one possible pictorial representation of the set of integers is just as points on the number line. Okay. So, this is one of our standard pictures when we think about integers. We just draw a number line and mark off things at equal intervals and you think of integers as being represented by this. So, one nice thing here is uh, this picture also tells you how to do addition for instance. So, if you wanted to add 2 and 3 sort of only using this picture here is what you would do. You would start with one of the two numbers. Let us say you start with 2 and you go 3 steps from there. Right. So, 2 plus 3 gives you the number 5 pictorially becomes the following. You start at say 2 and then you take 3 steps. So, 3 steps would mean 1, 2, 3 and where you land is exactly the answer. So, 3, 4, 5. So, that is that is going to be what you get when you add 2 with 3. Okay. So, addition really represents moving along those many steps starting with let us say one of the two numbers. Now, similarly we want to think of integers modulo d for instance. So, let me do it again by example. Let me look at integers modulo 4. So, I will take d equals 4 just as an example just makes the picture easier. So, how should one really think of these guys? You should think of them as being points on a circle. Okay. So, when I say integers modulo 4, what does it mean? When I divide a number by 4, I can either get remainder 0, 1, 2 or 3. So, there are 4 possible remainders. So, I will think of it as being 4 points uh, equally spaced on the circle. So, here for instance, since I have 4 points, they are just going to occupy the 4 axes. So, think of this as the number 0 on, on the circle. This is the number 1, that is the number 2, this is the number 3. And now, what happens? Well, I keep going, think of the next number, which is a 4, but what I am doing here is only keeping track of remainders that I get when I divide integers by 4. Okay. So, when I take the number 4, well, 4 when divided by, by 4 gives me remainder 0. So, I should really think of 4 as again being the same point. So, this is really also represents 4 if you wish. And then I go one more step, I go to 5, but I do not think of 5 as 5, but only as what I get when I divide it by 4. Okay. What is the remainder obtained when I divide 5 by 4? Well, that is a 1. Okay. So, I should really think of 5 as sitting here. Similarly, I should think of 6 as sitting here, 7 as sitting here, 8 as sitting here and so on, 9, 10, 11 and so on and so forth. So, you should really think of the set of all integers as somehow having been wrapped around the circle in this fashion. So, it, when you keep going round and round, you still get all the integers except that many of the integers occupy the same spot. Okay. So, that is really how you would want to think of uh, integers when you go modulo or something. Now, the nice thing with this is uh, you can actually just like uh, I talked about how addition has a uh, uh, nice interpretation in terms of the picture, you can also think of addition modulo 4 okay, or multiplication modulo 4. So, what does addition modulo 4 mean? So, let us do this, let us draw the table for addition modulo 4. So, what does it mean to draw the table? Well, I will draw, so let me think of two numbers m and n. So, that is the table. Now, m and n are integers, but I only keep track of things modulo 4, which means I only worry about remainders. So, let me say m is numbers between 0 and 4, 0 and 3, n can take values 0, 1, 2, 3. And now, I want to add them, except when I write the answers down, I will only write down the remainders that the answers give me. For instance, so let us do one of the, uh, well, let us do the first row for instance. If I had 0, 0 plus 0 is of course a 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 plus 2 is 2, 0 plus 3 is 3. 
Similarly, I add 1 to everything, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3 and now 1 plus 3 which is supposed to be a 4, right. So, if I were sort of just doing regular integers, I would think of that as a 4 because I am adding 1 and 3, but now I am doing things modulo 4 which means I only look at the remainder that I get. So, this answer 4, uh, when I divide it by 4, it gives me a remainder 0. So, this guy should really be a 0. So, similarly, if I add 2 plus 0 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 2 plus 2 should be a 4 morally, but a 4 is really a 0 because that is a remainder. Similarly, 2 plus 3 is 5, but 5 when divided by 4 gives me remainder 1. Okay. So, similarly, this is 3, 0, 1 and 2. Okay. So, this is what the addition table modulo 4 means and observe that in fact, this has the exact same interpretation as the interpretation for addition that we talked about on the number line. Okay. So, for instance, let me pick on something here, uh, 3 plus 3 was 2 according to this, right. So, 3 plus 3 is a 2. So, this is modulo 4, that is the equation, 3 plus 3 is actually a 2. Now, let us see what that means. So, let us start on the circle. So, what are we supposed to do? We start at 3, so that is the starting point and then we go 3 steps okay. and wherever we land up is the answer. So, here is the starting point. Now, going 3 steps has to be done on the circle, right. So, I go 1 step, 2 steps and 3 steps. So, I traverse 3 steps along the circle and when I do that, well, I land up exactly at 2. Okay. So, when I say 3 plus 3 is 2, what it means is I need to really traverse my distances on the circle rather than think of it as distances traversed on the straight line. Okay. So, that is really the, the uh, addition table and similarly, one can do a multiplication table. You can write out uh, products of numbers and only worry about what their remainders are. So, similarly, let us do the multiplication table here. So, I will write out these numbers n and n as before. Okay, so, 0 times 0 is 0, well 0 times anything is a 0, so that is easy, it is all 0. Similarly, anything times a 0 is a 0. Now, let us do 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 3 is 3. Similarly, 2 times each of these guys, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2, so what is 2 times 2? Well, morally it is a 4, but a 4 as we just said modulo 4. So, I am doing this multiplication table mod 4. Okay. 4, when I look at the remainder it gives on division by 4, that is a 0 again. So, that is a 0 and 2 into 3 should really be a 6, but 6 when I divide by 4 gives me remainder 2. Okay. So, here it is somewhat funnier, it is 0, 2, 0, 2, those are the 4, four numbers and similarly, if I multiply 3 by each of these, 3 into 1 is 3. 3 into 2 is 6, but 6 is really a 2 modulo 4 and 3 into 3 is 9 and 9 modulo 4 is a 1. Okay. So, here are, here is the multiplication table modulo 4 if you wish and you know of course, if you just literally write it out, it seems somewhat funny to give you funny answers. So, for instance, 3 into 2 is 2, right. So, we get things like this, 3 into 2 is actually a 2. Okay, but remember, this is all modulo 4, we are not writing out you know things for just regular integers. But here, there is already something very interesting, if you sort of observe what happened right here, we had these two numbers 2 and 2, right. We multiplied them together and what we actually got is a 0. Okay. So, this is already a, a very new and interesting phenomenon that is popped out of this, this new arithmetic. So, this way of doing things is what is called modular arithmetic. Okay. It is like regular arithmetic in the sense we do addition and multiplication, but the rules for addition and multiplication are more rules on the circle okay, rather than rules on the, the straight line. So, here for instance, if you multiply 2 with itself, the answer is a 0, 
why is this very counterintuitive? Well, we are always used to thinking of numbers as having the following property. So, if, if for instance this were the number x, say some real number, this is a non-zero number, right. So, 2 is of course not 0, it is a non-zero number, but when you multiply it with itself, it gives you a 0, okay. So, observe we also, you know, looked at things like this back when we talked about matrices. If we have a 2 cross 2 matrix A, it was perfectly possible for A to be non-zero, but A times A to give you the 0 matrix. Okay, so, non-zero things can have square 0. Here is again an, uh, another somewhat different example in the context of modular arithmetic where something squares to 0, but the thing itself is non-zero. Okay, so, some strange things tend to happen in this business. And so, one last thing which is uh, again related to multiplication is powers. So, So, what do I mean by this? We could take for instance d to be 5 and let us do the following. Let us write out all powers of 2. Okay, you keep raising 2 to higher and higher powers and what do you study? Well, you study the remainder that you get when you go modulo 5. Okay? So, what I am going to do is the following. I am going to write out all powers of 2, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 and so on. So, I, I write those down and below what I do is I write out the remainders when I go modulo 5. Okay. So, this is now going to be the remainders modulo 5 or on division by 5. So, 1 when divided by 5 gives me remainder 1, 2 when divided by 5 gives me remainder 2, 4 gives me a 4 that is easy, 8 when divided by 5, well 8 is 5 plus 3, so it gives me remainder 3. So, I have 1, 2, 4 and 3. Now, let us do the next one 16 when divided by 5, 16 is 1 more than 15, 15 is a multiple of 5, so it is a 1, 32 is well remainder 2, 64 is remainder 4 and let us see what is the next one 128 is remainder 3 again. Okay, and so on. So, if you keep continuing this, here is what you will find that it just keeps repeating like this 1, 2, 4, 3, 1, 2, 4, 3 and so on. It repeats in a block of 4. Okay. So, there is a, so this repeats. Now, this is a, a, a very good thing to, to try out oneself. So, try doing the same thing for other choices of d and for other powers. So, instead of 2, you know, even for d equals 5, try the same thing with say d equals 3, uh, I am sorry, this number instead of 2, think of it as 3 or 4 and so on. And similarly, change this number d and see what happens. So, in all instances, you will always see that it, it repeats after a certain, certain block size, but it is interesting to study, you know, when does it repeat, what is the, what is the size of this block that repeats in each case. Okay? So, I am going to leave this uh, without saying too much more beyond this. There are uh, theorems such as what is called Fermat's little theorem and so on, which are relevant in this context, but for now I would say uh, this is quite a right thing for experimentation. So, experiment with various choices of D and for and with various numbers here okay? and try and make your own conclusions on what seems to be happening here what are the remainders, when do they repeat, uh, you know, with what repetition size do you get and how does, how does things change, how do things change if d is a, say a prime number, say 5 or 7 or 11 would behave in a certain way as opposed to numbers which are not prime. Okay? So, consider those two cases and experiment with this and see what you get.